Yo, what's up guys, Adrian here. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create fully responsive web designs using things like auto layout, constraints, and the box model. And we're going to design everything with development in mind. So let's dive in and get you prepared before you hand off your next website designs to your developers. Let's go. All right, so I'm going to use this nice little hero design to explain everything about this today's method. And as always, the link to download the file is in the description of this video. So make sure to grab the files uh, to see and practice for yourself. First things first, uh, let's talk about the box model and CSS and why it's important to understand this concept first before designing anything in Figma. So the box model refers to how elements are laid out on a web page with each element being placed in a rectangular box or a div block. And it's important to understand the box model and how it works uh, because it determines the size and the position and the placement of the element on the page and how they interact with each other. As you can see on our design here, there is no box model whatsoever. All of the elements are randomly placed on the design. And that's a pretty unprofessional approach. Right now, our text labels are floating somewhere on the middle left of our screen and with the image placed somewhere on our right. It's not cropped, it's not placed in any box whatsoever. It's also floating freely. And our header is just a logo placed in the top left and the call to action button placed in the top right. And same goes for our logos here. Uh, they are listed in one line below the hero section with a pretty random placement. And while this is perfectly fine for your concept work, it might not be the case when you need to design and hand off your designs to developers to uh, do the rest of the work for you. And to make our designs perfectly acceptable for the development, uh, we need to add some structure to our designs. Because one thing that's crucial when we're designing in Figma is to know how our designs will be implemented into code later on. All right, so before we uh, start cleaning up our designs, let's quickly set up a layout grid. And if you want to see a detailed breakdown of how I set up my layout grids, uh, you can watch the video in the top right corner. I'll uh, put the video link right there. So let's quickly go switch over to columns, set the columns uh, count to 12. Uh, let's change the color to something uh, dark blue, set the margins to 96 pixels and gutters to 24 pixels. And this will be our starting point. Okay, so now that we have our layer grid in place, let's first look at our text layers and start thinking how we could group them up and put them into boxes. Setting up the, the layer grid, uh, we already determined that our box width will be around uh, 1248. So let me just quickly draw a frame and make sure that we are sitting at about 1248 pixels of box width. And that's the working space that we'll be designing on and later on building our website out live. And right now uh, we know that the maximum designing resolution, at least for devices up until uh, 1920 by 1080 will be 1248. So we don't want our box to span more than that. We actually want to span for about six layer grid columns because we'll split our design into uh, main columns and then put these two columns into a container nesting our uh, left and right column inside. Right, so let me uh, change the size of this text just so it fits into our six column width and start adjusting the size of our layers for this left column first. So let's say we want to span our descriptive text up around here and then place it 24 pixels from the top heading because we'll be following an eight pixel uh, rhythm for this video and we'll do the same with our with our CTAs and we'll do the same. So let's select our text layers first, hit Shift plus A, and this will put our text layers into an auto layout container. And we need to put them into auto layout containers because when they're auto layout, we can set the constraints and then make them responsive. We can call it text container because it contains both of our, of our text layers. And now let's select our both of our uh, call to actions. Also hit Shift plus A, and this will be our CTA uh, container. And uh, let's also add an auto layout for ellipses and change the spacing to minus eight because we want them to overlap. And yeah, we might as well call it avatars and let's uh, select them both. And as you can see here, our text needs to be uh, set to auto width to avoid uh, it breaking out of the frame. Set it to auto width and then select avatars, click uh, shift plus A and then call it call out. Now we can zoom out a little bit and then select all of our layers here, hit Shift plus A, and this will be our copy container. And uh, let's also, at this point, we can use 
regular frames or auto layout frames. And if you use auto, auto layout frames, it will be easier for you to change your designs when you're adjusting for tablet and mobile uh, resolutions. So let's use auto layout for now. So let's click Shift plus A one more time. And uh, you can leave some padding on the left. I usually leave around 20 pixels padding on both sides because if we start resizing our frame and let's say a user is on a device that's uh, smaller than 1248, your designs will squish to about this point. And if you leave some padding on the inner frames, then the design will look something like this because you always have this extra safe space of 20 pixels between your element and the borders of the of these design. Yeah, for this example, we're just going to use uh, zero padding on the left and right. You can call it left column and then let's resize it just so it fits. OK, but before we do that, let's also clean up our header because uh, that's actually the first thing we should do. So let's select our logo and let's select our CTA and then hit shift plus A, call it uh, container and then hit shift plus A one more time, drag those handles and then resize it. Resize your handles until you reach the end of your screens and then let's also add some padding on both top and bottom align your elements to the middle to make sure that the padding inside of your container is set to 96 it's called a header and then now let's grab our left column and start resizing it until we uh, snap with the header and uh, Okay, let's also clean up our logos because this will be our uh, bottom bounding box. So this is already a group, so let's make it auto layout frame. Let's call it container and then hit shift plus A one more time because this will be our logo. I mean, we can call it logos. So let's resize it. We can also type in the values here where, where the width is. Add some padding, maybe like 16, push it a little bit uh, down and then select the a container inside and make sure it's fill it, filling the entire width. And now let's set some padding inside of our logo container to 96 and then uh, align our elements in the middle. Uh, but we want them to be spread out. Let's select this box here and then click X. And this will uh, change your spacing mode from packed to space between. And let's add some quick drop shadow effect, add some fill and then add some drop shadow, like really slight drop shadow maybe to like four percent and now we can finally uh, go back to our left column and then hover over this side and drag it right until it snaps with the logos uh, below and then we can click on this box and align left in the middle and that's your left column container and with our image here uh, we can't really place it like that without any constraints i mean you could uh in web development this would be placed in uh, position absolute uh, but we need to have some constraints because when we resize it uh, we need it to react in a certain way so the first thing i would do is that if it doesn't have any let me just uh remove the kind of layer grid just so we see the image if it doesn't have any shadows blending out of the frame i would just hit command and then resize it just so it's taking the minimum amount of space and i would open up the grids again so Control and g i would uh, try to position it just so it fits the uh, sixth sixth column uh, grid and then i would hit option command ng and uh, call it right column and then resize it just like we did with our left column just so we are filling out the entire uh, height and width of this grid that we set on our um your design and now select your image and then place it using the alignment here in the middle we actually we might want to set the constraint to center because we want our design to be placed within the container box that we set on it so 1248 if you remember so let's uh, keep it at center and then this uh, we need to put into a bigger container and call it hero section so let's select our left column and right column and uh, hit option Command NG, let's call it a hero container and then resize it like that. And one more time, let's select our right column and left column and uh, put it into auto layer container and let's call it container this time. Actually, we can leave it at hero just to follow the same naming convention. Our hero needs to be set for 1440 and our container, um, let's change the spacing to auto. Our container needs to be set to 1248. So let's align it in the middle 
And uh, now make sure that these will be sitting in one place when we resize it. So let's set the constraint to center. And also you need to set the constraint on your parent container. So in our case, the hero, let's uh, set it to center and top. And now when I resize it, the design will stay in the middle. Actually, we want to set the logos to uh, left and right because we want them to be resizing along with our frame. But now let's set the uh, container lo logo container to fixed width instead of fill uh, because when we resize them, they will remain in the same place. So let's do the same for a, he a header container. So this will be, uh, we can set it to left and right and the container within the uh, header to fixed width. And then also in the middle, let's also change the uh, space between the items to auto. And now when we resize it, everything is respecting uh, the constraints that we set on our design. Forgot about this ellipse here. So let's call it uh, background and let's place it in a right column like right below the uh, MacBook Air. Just make sure that your column uh, is not clipping the content because when you clip the content, you'll see uh, that it cuts off at some point. If you look at the layers panel right now, you'll see the structure that we followed to place our designs in a box model. So we have the header and inside of that header, we have the call to action with the logo sitting in a container that's placed inside of our header. That's setting the constraints on the container inside. And if you look at the hero section, we have the right column with the image and the background. And if you uh, move over to your left, you have the callout, which contains the avatar images and uh, text label. And you have the CTA container with your main, main call to action and secondary call to action. And right above that, you have the text container with two text layers. And all of that is sitting in a copy container, which is sitting in a left column, which is along with the right column sitting in the container that's placed inside of a hero section. And all of these elements have their own uh, width and height, which you can see here. And uh, like I said, you, you need to also remember if you set any padding on your inner containers, because if you do, uh, then the placement of your elements will change. And you need to be mindful of that when you're uh, actually when you're designing, it might not feel like like a big deal. But if you're going into development, especially on devices and mobile devices where the space is really uh, scarce, uh, you need to be really sure about the padding, the margin and the borders that you set on your element. Now, if you, let's say, add a stroke to your design and then this stroke is set to outside, then your copy container width, it's not going to be 652. It's going to be 652 plus uh, the two pixels on the left, on the right. Uh, the width will be 656. Now, let me just switch over to a different design and I'll show you uh, like a full landing page. I would then for easier responsive designing, turn all of these uh, section frames into auto layout containers. Like if, if you see here, the entire landing page is an auto layout container uh, because now I can move my sections around super easy and quickly to make some changes to the overall flow of information uh, exactly like we did designing our landing page for the Figma Mastery uh, course, which by the way, if you're interested in checking out, the link is also in the description. Now, I don't want to make this video too long, so if you'd like to see me adjust this desktop design to tablet and mobile screens, I'll upload part two of this video and explain everything in detail. So drop a comment down in the comment section and I'll make sure to post the follow up to this video. All right, there you have it, guys. Here's how to make your designs responsive fast and in line with the development. So one more time, remember that by designing with development in mind, uh, you're not only making life easier for developers, but you're also showing your value as a designer. And understanding how your designs will be implemented into code is super important for creating successful and functional designs that just uh, work. And that's exactly what you should be doing if you want to be a pro. So just quickly, like I mentioned, if you want to see a detailed breakdown of how to design with development in mind, uh, make sure to check out my Figma Mastery course, where I first take you through a few hours of Figma basics and foundations to finish on a four hour long design of a fully responsive landing page and a working prototype from a blank canvas to design handoff. I also wrote an ultimate guide to web design ebook that goes over this exact process and a lot more like web design guidelines and principles 
and an 80 page long guide with document, templates, invoices, and sales script. And the link is in the description as well. That's it guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with the future videos and new content. So stay curious guys, stay creative. This was your Adrian and I'll see you very, very soon.